Natural rocks do not hit the brakes. They do not pick a destination. But as we speak, 3i Atlas is doing exactly that. On March 17th, 2026, this interstellar visitor will reach the moon, Euphemy deep within Jupiter's orbit. The math says it is impossible, the CIA says it is classified, and the mainstream says it is a coincidence. I will be honest with you, I am not buying it. This isn't a flyby, this isn't a random drift through the void, this is a rendezvous. The Three-Eye Atlas arrival at Jupiter is no accident, it is an arrival. And we're the only ones left in the room still trying to call it a comet. What gets me is how much energy is being spent to keep us looking the other way. I cannot shake the feeling that we are witnessing the single most important event in the history of our species. And yet, the official narrative is as dry as a textbook. 3i Atlas has been breaking the rules since the day it entered our system. It has shown non-gravitational acceleration. It is carrying a chemical signature of nickel that suggests industrial origin. And now, it has a target. We are talking about a precision maneuver toward the Jupiter-Hill sphere, the invisible border where Jupiter's gravity takes over. 3i Atlas is skimming that border with a 0.1% margin of error. If you were driving a car at 100 miles an hour and you managed to park it perfectly in a garage you have never seen before, people would call you a master driver. When an interstellar object does it across millions of miles of darkness, we are told it is just weird physics. But I do not know if that idea is right. It feels less like physics and more like intent. We are moving toward a threshold in March 2026 that changes everything. If 3i Atlas enters that orbit and stays, it becomes Jupiter's 96th moon. A moon that was not there yesterday. A moon that came from another star. Sometimes I think we underestimate how quiet the universe can be and how much we have come to rely on that silence to keep our sanity intact. But that silence is about to be broken. To understand why this is a crisis of logic, we have to talk about the physics of the Hill Sphere. It is a term we do not use much in daily life, but it is the most important boundary in the Jovian system. It marks the edge of where Jupiter's gravity finally overpowers the suns. For a planet as massive as Jupiter, that border sits at roughly 53.5 million kilometers out. 3i Atlas is on a trajectory to cross that line at exactly 53.6 million kilometers. It is practically dragging its wings on the fence. I'll be honest, the closer you look at that number, the more it feels like a pilot choosing a glide slope rather than a rock tumbling through the void. Now, why does that matter? Because to stay in that sphere, to actually be captured and become a moon, an object has to slow down. If you are coming from interstellar space, you are moving way too fast. You are like a bullet trying to be caught by a piece of silk without tearing it. You have to hit the brakes, but there is no air in the vacuum to create drag. There is no natural mechanism for an object to suddenly dump its kinetic energy just as it reaches a planet unless it is falling into a direct collision. Avi Loeb, the Harvard astronomer who has been a lightning rod for this discussion, argues that unless the object is fragmenting in a very specific, almost impossible way, the only explanation for a stable capture is propulsion. And yet, we see no huge plumes of gas, no traditional rockets. What we see is a silent, ghostly adjustment, of course. What really messes with my head is the chemical signature. Spectroscopic data suggests that 3i Atlas has an abnormally high nickel to iron ratio. In nature, those two usually go hand in hand. But when you find nickel by itself or in such high concentrations, it usually points to one thing, industrial refining. It's the kind of material you'd use to build the hull of a craft that needs to survive a thousand year drift through the darkness. Some researchers wonder if the outgassing we have seen is actually a high efficiency propulsion system disguised as a natural process. Others push back saying we just do not understand how comets behave in deep space but comets do not perform microcorrections after passing the sun to hit a target millions of miles away. 3i Atlas did. It adjusted its path. It made a choice. And that choice is leading it directly into a cluster of the strangest objects in our solar system, the Ananke Group.
The no accident premise becomes undeniable when you look at where 3 I Atlas is heading. It is not just Jupiter, it is a specific neighborhood called the Ananke Group. These are not your typical moons like Io or Europa. These are irregulars. They are small, jagged, and they move in a retrograde orbit, meaning they spin the opposite way of Jupiter itself. It is like a group of cars driving the wrong way on a highway. The official explanation is that they are captured asteroids, pieces of rock that got stuck in Jupiter's web eons ago. But here is the part that always gets me. We have almost no clear images of them. Despite all our missions to Jupiter, the Ananke group remains a collection of blurry pixels. It's almost as if they don't want to be seen. Take Euphemi, for instance. It is a tiny speck, only two kilometers wide. On March 17th, just one day after crossing the Jovian border, 3I Atlas will make a close pass to Euphemi. Now ask yourself, why would an interstellar object, having traveled across the light years of the void, decide to dance with a two-kilometer rock that orbits backwards? If you were looking for a place to hide a beacon, or a base, or a refueling station, would you not pick the place no one is looking? A place where the orbit itself acts as a cloaking device against the natural flow of the system. I can't shake the feeling that the Ananke group isn't a cluster of rocks at all, but a fleet of ancient dormant ships waiting for a signal. What gets me is the timing. In January 2026, Euphemi reached its most distant point from Jupiter, its Apo Jove, almost as if it were stepping out of the crowd to meet the visitor halfway. This kind of orbital synchronization is statistically haunting. It is like trying to hit a moving fly with a needle from a mile away. I do not know if that idea is right, but it is hard not to feel like we are witnessing a handoff. A long drift through the darkness is ending, and the docking is about to begin. If 3I Atlas enters a stable orbit with Euphem, the captured asteroid theory falls apart. Rocks do not just decide to join a retrograde group. They are placed there. We are currently tracking the object's light curve. The way it reflects light, and it's showing a metallic sheen that is almost impossible for a natural object to maintain. It's too clean. It's too reflective. It's as if it just woke up after a very long sleep. The silence of the scientific community on this synchronization is what troubles me the most. We are told it's a coincidence, but in space, coincidences are just math we haven't admitted to yet. If you see two objects in the middle of the void moving toward each other with this kind of precision, you have to stop calling it physics and start calling it navigation. We are watching a 1947 style event play out in slow motion, and most people are still arguing about whether the image is a smudge on the lens. But the lens is clear. The math is clear. The destination is Euphemi. I cannot shake the feeling that we are being told to look away. There is a metaphor that has been circulating in the scientific community lately, the alligator paradox. Imagine two people looking at a river. They see a long, dark shape floating. One says, look at that log. The other says, that is not a log. Look at the eyes. Look at the way it is moving against the current. That is an alligator. The person who sees the log is comfortable. A log is safe. A log does not change your world. But if it is an alligator, everything changes. You cannot go back in the water. You have to admit that there is a predator in your environment. 3I Atlas is our alligator. We see the non-gravitational acceleration. We see the industrial chemical signature of nickel and the lack of iron. We see the pinpoint targeting of a retrograde moon. But the log people, the mainstream institutions, are desperate to call it a rock. They have to, because if they admit it is an alligator, they have to admit we are not alone. This is where the CIA and the national security state come in. It has recently been revealed that 3I Atlas data is being handled under protocols dating back to 1947. For those who know their history, 1947 was the year of the Roswell incident. Why would a comet trigger a 70-year-old secrecy protocol? The silence from the official channels is becoming deafening. Why are the high-resolution images being classified? Why is a 1947 Secrecy Act being used to redact orbital coordinates? You do not hide information about a snowball. You hide information about a probe. 
3i Atlas is moving against the current of the solar system and it is heading straight for the boat. Some astronomers argue it is just a fragmenting body, but fragments do not perform orbital corrections. They do not navigate to Euphemi. We are watching the birth of a 96th moon, a moon that was not there yesterday, a moon that chose to stay. What gets me is the psychological impact of this secrecy. By keeping the data classified, they are trying to keep us in a state of perpetual uncertainty. As long as it's just a weird comet, we don't have to change our worldview. We can keep pretending that the void is empty, but 3i Atlas is forcing our eyes open. If Avi Loeb is right, and a new moon is detected after March 17th, it is irrefutable evidence of technology. Nature does not have breaks, but 3i Atlas is clearly slowing down. We are living through the days that will be written about in textbooks a thousand years from now. The log is about to show its teeth, and the void will finally have a voice. I don't know if we are ready for what happens when that voice finally speaks, but we can't keep pretending the river is empty. The alligator is here. It's hungry for a destination, and it's already parking in the driveway. There is a certain sadness in realizing how much we've been kept in the darkness. We've spent centuries thinking we were the only ones observing the stars, never realizing that the stars were observing us back. The arrival of 3i Atlas isn't just a threat or a wonder, it's a mirror. It shows us how little we actually know about our own backyard. As it settles in among the irregular moons of Jupiter, it's a reminder that the solar system isn't a museum, it's a living, breathing harbor, and we are just the latest guests to arrive at the party. I do not know what you will be doing on March 16th, but I know where I will be. I will be watching the telemetry, waiting for the moment the map of our solar system is redrawn forever. It is a strange feeling, is it not? To know that the universe is so much bigger and more crowded than we were ever told. Sometimes I think we underestimate how quiet the universe can be and how much we have come to rely on that silence to keep our sanity intact. But the void is talking now and 3i Atlas is the message. If you want to stay with us as we track this arrival into the heart of the Jovian system, subscribe and leave a like. It really does help us keep this investigation moving in a world that wants us to look away. And if you have a theory about what is waiting on Euphemi, leave a comment. We read all of them because in this journey, we are all we have. If you find this type of content valuable and want to help us dive deeper into the mysteries of the darkness, please consider becoming a member. It is a small way to support a much larger search for the truth. Until the alligator finally shows its teeth, stay curious and keep watching the stars because they are definitely watching us.